Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So this is the last thing we did. This was up on Patreon here as everything goes up on Patreon. Uh, also on Hearts Home specifically has uh, that music playlist, and as does Patreon. Uh, so do check them out. Uh, this one felt really good and um, positive vibes are definitely needed. Indeed they are. Yes, absolutely. As we go deeper and deeper into the unveiling of everything, boy, when you look all around the world, you'll see a lot of things that really stick out and just kind of make you say, huh, we, we understand that the history that we're given is so far off, it's not even close. Even timing, uh, I think the timing of events, the timing of structures, when things were built is is not accurate and i wish we had a clearer understanding of how the cycles of the yuga work uh from a perspective of an embodied human because i don't think it's as simple as as simply you know twelve thousand year cycles uh twenty four thousand year bigger cycles or twenty five thousand I, I don't think it's that simple. I really, really don't. Um, I think there's a lot more to it that we just maybe can't comprehend when we're embodied. <laughs> I was enjoying watching them uh, with their tractors trying to lift some of these stones because that's the truth of it. They're, they're to my knowledge, as far as mobile equipment is concerned, who could possibly move this stuff? Who? I, I mean, you really have to ask that question, put it in perspective. I mean, our, our best equipment that we have is not going to be able to move this stuff around and put it in position and, you know, let alone take measurements and, and cut it. So I just, you know, unless it's alternative, uh, it, it never gets addressed by those who are in control by those who are in power i mean the question is never seriously asked and an answer given it's just so strange how the cognitive dissonance about it or the just blatant ignoring uh the idea that there might be something else in our past that um is quite amazing but we are not to know yeah this is lebanon uh balbeck Baal, you know again Baal, and it, it, it's gigantic. It couldn't be moved in today's world with today's equipment. Uh, you probably have seen this in the past. It gets me thinking of a statement made by Haim Ashed. Haim Ashed is the former Israeli uh, Minister of Defense that came right out and said that the Galactic Federation is real, that extraterrestrials are real, uh, Israel and the U.S. interacts with it, extraterrestrial, you know, non-human beings on a regular basis. Um, it's been said by many uh, in very, very uh, high places. They've, they've just, if, if we hadn't noticed, you know, they've said that they have many different ships that they've tried to reverse engineer and and figure out how do these things work uh one of the ideas is that the ufos or what we would term ufos uaps it's not even propulsion that is what enables them to jump through um and warp space so to speak you know go to warp speed it's actually the material that the ships are constructed out of that actually bends space time and so Haim Ashed, I wouldn't trust anybody that's in government. That's just me. Uh, but at the same time, they know at some point in time we're going to put the pieces together to the point where we know it's always been an extraterrestrial, interdimensional affair. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be that need to soften the blow and control the narrative. And he, he has said that the reason why they're not interacting openly is that humans are not ready yet. And we don't even understand really what the natural matrix is. We do not understand exactly what space-time or time-space is. And once we do, then it, it's kind of like 
again, it's thinking out of the box. We're in a box and we can't conceive of things that are so foreign to the construct in which we've grown up. It, it, the reason is because of the indoctrination. We can't perceive the world for what it really is. Yet we do know it's all about the observer. This is a matrix that's created for the observer. And it's only when there's consciousness looking and observing that things actually truly appear to manifest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a really fun subject. It, there's, there's a lot there to try to wrap your head around. Um, ultimately, we are here to expand ourselves. And I, I wish it were as easy as saying, okay, because I, I know the Vatican sits on all the information. I know that they have it down there under the Vatican. It's all right there. I, I really wish, you know, if, if I could make a wish, that they would put the information out there so that people could see where they are from so people could see what they are made of what you know what and and i mean the masses too because many of us do understand our our lineage we do understand where we're from and we know that we have certain certain abilities but what about the masses they're just going through this life and they're to me it's like they're being robbed of the very essence of the fabric of themselves I've shared with you guys um, that once, you know, we're able to move about a little bit freer um, and we have the dogs, you know, taken care of and everything because these guys don't want to be separated from us for a minute. Uh, I would love to do a run down to Peru and Bolivia and and go explore. You see Paracas, Paracas, uh, not just famous for the beaches, it's famous for its elongated skulls. And, you know, there are trade routes, old-time old trade routes that go through this area uh, that show that there were non-homo sapiens. Let's, let's just put it th at that. Non-homo sapiens that lived here along with homo sapiens. And their DNA doesn't match up. Where the spinal cord attaches to the skull is different. It is definitively different. You go just down the road and you got Nazca with the lines again, you know, that are reaching out and trying to say hi to people flying by in the sky. And that's really what they're trying to do. Head inland and, you know, over here you have Olentai Tambo and Cusco. There's loaded with megaliths in these areas. There's so much. And I, I don't even think we've really... Uh, we're just looking at the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. This is a massive megalith lying uh, in the Cusco Highlands. Up close, you can see what appears to be glacial erosion on top of the precision megalithic shaping. The glacier came by down there. Hmm, how did this get there? Uh, hmm, very curious. You know, our history is not what we've been told. It's not even close to what we've been told. And the abilities of the beings that have lived on the planet have varied with the different yugas. The farther back in time, when we look at all these megalithic structures, the farther back you go, the more advanced they are. By the way, the, you know, the DNA testing and, of course, the, the control system you know, comes back and tries to uh, control us. And they want to put us back mentally into those history books, which are full of... Well, stories, his stories, whose stories, the controller's stories, the controllers that are non-human. And why wouldn't they want us to know that there's tons of interaction with non-homo sapiens, uh, between homo sapiens and many different beings that were not homo sapiens? Because ultimately the controllers are not homo sapiens. This is the big reveal. You know, they want you to think uh, the earth is flat. There's no life out there. You can't escape the dome. Uh, the firmament's keeping you in, keeping everybody else out because they're not from here. But, you know, neither are we ultimately, really. We come from other places, other star systems. You know, so you have this. And what's fascinating about this is, too, that you find close DNA relatives. Uh, in fact, the closest ones we find are in the Black Sea. 
The Black Sea area. Yeah, you know, again, over by where the war is going on. Ukraine, Crimea. Uh, yeah, it's fascinating to say the least. Again, when you look at these megalithic sites all around the world, they, they, there are some that are a little bit more well known and and you know more spoken about than others. And again, um, yeah, Brian Forrester. Uh, maybe we'll take a tour with him someday. It'd be it's certainly fun. We've watched enough of his videos uh, covering all the ones between Peru and Bolivia. It's a real fascinating area, as I've shared with you guys. Even as a little kid in seventh grade, I don't know why I was drawn to this area. I just was. Maybe it was a foreshadowing of things to come. But the thing is. We don't have to go just to that area, although what, what you're looking at right here is from the sky, you're looking at where the locations are, where the Nazca lines are. So you can see they're in a pretty expansive area here. They're down really at the base of the mountains. And, you know, they're facing kind of the west there. Oh boy, you know, it just makes me think of all those uh, more European, uh, Celtic, Irish, uh, English legends about the Fae going off into the West, right? Do you remember those? I mean, I'm sure if you guys have, you know, paid any attention to Tolkien, who again just borrowed from mythology when he was doing the Lord of the Rings, uh, the elves, the Fae, um, they, they left us at some point in time. And, you know, the world was left to men. This is what the mythology talks about. Now, there's different groups. The ones that we long for are the benevolent ones, the, the ones that were gentle with us, the ones that taught us how to thrive, not just survive, taught us about spirituality and taught us things like, you know, you don't need any sort of dogma source is within you so just learn to go within this is an old photo of somebody standing by you know standing right on top of one of the nazca lines these again are depictions of all sorts of different natural creatures and some kind of humanoid looking beings uh, this one was this the hummingbird i think uh, i think this is a hummingbird these can only be clearly seen from thousands of feet in the sky. Otherwise, you really can't make out exactly what they were. Why would they do this? Well, to me, and it really hit me uh, about a week or two ago when I was uh, reading about the takeover of the planet by that dark force, the, the dark matrix, the ones in the Hindu legend that we call the Asuras, um, the aggressive extraterrestrials that came in and took everything over, it hit me that what this was, was this was the people, along with perhaps some leftover, uh, either hybrids or maybe even leftover actual ETs that were still on the planet but didn't have a way to get off anymore because of the war that had gone on and the fact that now everybody here was behind enemy lines they were doing these depictions kind of saying come back and help us and many people have said why doesn't the galactic federation help us as we are um having this human experience and and that is it it's it's something that's hard to understand when we're in the body but they don't want to interfere with our, our human uh, experience. When you look at all these depictions, you know, you see a lot of natural depictions, a dog, a monkey, a condor, a spider, a hummingbird, oh, stars, that's nice, you know, a heron, a parrot, a tree, hands, a whale. Wait a minute, what about these things? These look like Darth Vader's ships. They're telling you something. They're telling you something. And, and here you have an astronaut yeah, I really feel what they were doing was they were begging uh, and, and pleading with the good ones, the benevolent ones to come back, the ones we call the devas. This is not in South America. This is in North America. And this is, in fact, in Montana. So, you know, again, you don't have to go out, outside of North America to find these uh, megalithic structures. This is 
the amazing wall in Montana. They are here too. Again, the system has tried to destroy as much remnants of the evidence of very advanced beings being on this planet as best as it possibly can. And it's always looking to do that. And it does that through the opportunities that war provides. Mm -hmm. It does. And, and, you know, looking at this and knowing that the basic science out there tries to just wash it away with oh it's it's natural you know it's just natural erosion <laughs> it's um it's not natural erosion i've always believed that over here in america there is a lot more of this than what we're told it's it's deeply hidden we've seen it we've seen it out in in nevada ourselves so we do have photos um of you know just things that you really cannot you absolutely cannot explain unless there was some sort of a building there or there was some sort of a very large creature you know with just its skeleton there and and nothing that we know to be alive today so this this stuff is just all over um i i think the only thing we're really ever going to get in this lifetime though is to talk about it ourselves and go about it with our own our own uh whatever we know it to be or go inside go within and take a look see i i don't know that in this lifetime if they're ever really going to open up and admit um yeah there was another uh entity here you know your your mom and dad are are aliens really <laughs> i don't i don't see that happening so again when you look at the precision it, it's really amazing how these things were put together and, and we'll see this in place after place. Another curiosity is these little knobs uh, that seem to be common all over the world, you know, not just down in uh, Cusco in, in Peru, but these are up here too in this Montana wall. Um, it is interesting, the sage wall in Montana, is it uh, megalith? Yeah, apps. it feels like it. I don't think we have any doubt that it is. Of course, you know, they'll have some scientists come in and say, oh, yeah, it's just natural aging. Sure. It, it's a perfect line. And in fact, it's, you know, constructed at perfect angles to go along with the solstices. Um, you know, this they are dating to pre Younger Dryas event. So this is, you know, 13,000 years old, perhaps something in that range, maybe older. So this goes back to before uh, the Dark Ones took over and, and took over control of the planet. This is an amazing uh, structure. Again, you see these little knobs, and, and so many of these structures have a lot of granite, which is highly piezoelectric. And Cindy was picking up, there, there's something to do with uh, energetic charging is why they're there. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when you look at stone, uh, especially really, really, really hard stone and water, this does create a charge. It can charge the body. It could charge some sort of aerial vehicle. Um, it could magnetize things in a way that we don't understand today is completely hidden from us but that's what i picked up this is some type of a charge you could maybe put your hands on there you could put your vehicle on there stuff that just sounds so crazy and wild today but believe me it has energy these stones have energy and many of you are attracted to stones and probably many more of you were attracted to stones when you were little i know rock hunting was just such a huge thing for myself and my friends and uh, usually people kind of grow out of that they just sort of grow out of that but but where do you think that comes from you know that comes from a deep knowing that there is uh, important information in every single one of those stones that you found to be beautiful or you found to be unique or you brought home to your mom you sensed something in that stone and you picked it up and you brought it home you added it to your collection and I, I still have a collection. I'm still collecting rocks. <laughs> and, uh, I, I can't stop, but I, I know that they hold power. The stones, they are our elders. They hold an enormous amount of information about this earth as far as what happened to it, what it what has it been through. Um, and you, you can, you can 
hold the stone in your hand and you can feel a lot of these emotions coming up from the stone because they were there they were witnesses and when you understand energy you understand that all of that energy goes into the uh, densest densest part of things absolutely so this dolmen the tizer dolmen as you can see it it's somebody stuck these <clears throat> blocks on their ends and and you know just like kids make things with right. Lincoln logs etc and and put this uh, big flat rock on top dolmens you find all around the world and and here's one in Montana right next to where the wall is you know so is that just simply uh, you know another natural formation you know this is just the system trying to convince us otherwise of what we we sense which is there's something wrong with the matrix here again the angles are perfect so you know this is aligned with the solstices as we find things all around the world that is uh, is aligned with the solstices which you know this might make you um which makes me think that maybe this was actually constructed right when they um brought the moon into place um maybe this is trying to give us a, a timeline and a marker because that act did cause um, what we would think of as crustal displacement and in uh, trigger a pole shift like environment with truly the massive cataclysms that you see in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's just all so very interesting. And I really hope one day we're going to have a deeper understanding of it all. Yeah, and you know, it's fascinating too because where this is, there was a north south uh, trade route that went up through um, Alaska, and it's precisely located at the break where there's a gap between what used to be two glaciers. So, this was constructed right. <laughs> this gets me thinking about um, what was that? what was that big series remember with with the the dead that were like frozen and uh, the dragons and um remember with um with kip harrington and you know john snow you know with that big series with john snow and everything with the ice wall this is what this gives me a a, a fire and ice was the books so I, I don't know why I'm drawing the blank there, but you guys know what I'm talking about. This this wall gives me a feeling like that for some reason. Were they trying to hold something out? Were they trying? Did they know massive floods were coming? Because there were there were massive massive floods that hit this area in in Montana and broke its way in. Uh, things were completely underwater. Um, it would have, would have been nightmarish as you would have had tsunamis uh, basically flying this far inland because of the melting glaciers. Um, incredible, incredible. So I, I don't know. I feel like there was a major purpose for this particular wall, and I look forward to the comments to see what you guys pick up. So, you know, Montana does have a bunch of megaliths, and it is an interesting area to say the least and you know again we don't have to go outside of our own area and you know here you remember the easter island faces and then we discover it's not just faces the bodies are buried way underneath well you know here you have again canada you have what looks to be another face buried underground this is in british columbia well mu mu lemuria you know this this whole civilization uh existed and it wasn't just like on one little island no and it wasn't on an island that sank no this this was like atlantis these are these are more global civilizations at different time periods and when we talk again about the atlantean time period i think we're talking more um more bronze age mostly because it's it's in a time when the fall was happening when things were breaking down and, you know, the dark, greedy nature was seeding its way into humanity through the controller's infiltration. 
Whereas when we talk about this, we're talking more more golden age, and we're talking uh, very high vibe uh, beings that were coming and going, uh, very benevolent, uh, very friendly. You know, and we're also dealing with a class of people who understand how important the earth is. They they understand that the earth brings um, un- unlimited life. The earth brings healing. The earth brings peace. And they understand that nature gives you everything for free. Um, nature does not charge anything. And they understand that the only thing that nature wants is to be honored and protected. And once we get back to that point, then we'll find ourselves in another beautiful age. And you have all this evidence all over the place. You know, somebody on, on one of the other channels um was just making the comment show me some real evidence of aliens you know it's like well you you can't talk to somebody that is just that they have their eyes closed and they have their ears plugged you know but at the same time the evidence is everywhere and you even have different tribes that give you specifics you know we talked about how how do uh the dogen tribe know about a star that's not visible how do they know that? I mean, there's so much uh, that can only be explained with uh, advanced knowledge that either we had that we gained from others or even the fact that we had said, what about those tribes down in, in Brazil and the rainforest and other places around the world that are living so simply? Maybe they are you know, hundreds of generations of survivors of these cataclysms that just simply decided they didn't want to have anything to do with the technology anymore. And they went out and they're living in sync with, with nature as best as they can. And they've forgotten, you know, they, where uh, their ancestors come from. This looks like almost like the way you would do rebar in concrete. And yet it's not. And, you know, this is in Israel. So, again, it's, it's all over the whole world that you find this massive amount. You can't even categorize it. There's, there's so much evidence to advanced civilizations on the planet. It's, it's completely overwhelming. I think for some people it's just uh, too frightening to assume or come to the understanding that there's other beings that are out there somewhere it's just too much you know because people people maybe who have gone through abuse abusive situations they need to have control and for them to look at things and admit okay there's something else out here that's unexplainable that takes them out of their safe spot so maybe that's where they're at for now you know, with myself, it's just the, I felt this emptiness inside of me and this understanding that well, I'm not being told the truth. And these are lies. And I couldn't deny that anymore. The more I woke up, the more I just couldn't deny it. So that's when I started to read into the energy and, and find my understanding. But, you know, I mean, when it comes to nature, when it comes to our pets, there's so much love to be had. They, they can raise us up in vibration. You know, holding our pets really brings us a lot of grounding, a lot of, a lot of peace. And there is a beautiful world out there if we look for it. Absolutely. And, you know, the good news is we're getting out of this age. Um, the control system will do what it can to maintain control. But they cannot hold back the information anymore. And it's a tidal wave of, of information that's coming out, a, a, a veritable tsunami that is going to just wash over this whole planet. So, again, ground and root ourselves. Know that, you know, what's coming is much better than what's been because we are going to be escaping the system. Uh, at the same time, be as prepared as you possibly can because the system certainly doesn't want that. Uh, but there have been far better times in the past and there are far better times ahead. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.